Praise the Lord. Please, Bible study leaders. We've been given five more minutes so that we can take the attendance. Please make sure you count the number of people in your group. Amen.
Uh, Bible studies leaders, time, time is up now. Uh, hello. Hello. Special announcement, please. The time is up. Let's all remain where we are seated at the community level throughout the service. Please do not move. If you still don't have a community, can you raise up your hand so that we can direct you to a place where you sit? Bible studies leaders, the time is up. And let's remain at our community level. Let's be seated where we are throughout the service, please. We, 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 we will invite our elder Joe to lead us in the song ministration with the rare vessels. Johnson. Please, Bible study leaders, let's end it, please, let's end it. Amen. 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 Please, as Elder indicated we are all supposed to remain in the same place at the community level for the next for the rest of the service. Please remain at the same place for the rest of the service. Please remain at the same place for the rest of the service. We minister a song that is a hymn that has been very popular over the years, written by Anna Leticia Warren in 1850. It's a song that at times is ministered as an encouragement, but at the same time, in heavenly love abiding, no change my heart shall fear. And save is such confiding. For nothing changes here. This is what we minister and I want to trust God that you would agree with the words of the song and both you and I will be blessed by it. Hallelujah. 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 I am continuing to speak because some of us are still standing and not in the service mood. That is why I'm still speaking. So if you take your seat we would continue. May we crave on the indulgence of all those standing so that you can take your seat for the church to continue. May all conversations cease. Hallelujah. Those of you who know the song can sing along with us as we minister in heavenly love abiding. In heavenly love abiding, no change my heart shall feel, and save a such confiding, for nothing changes he. The storms will roll without me. My heart may low be laid 
But God is all around me And can and I be dismayed But God is all around me And can and I be dismayed Wherever He may guide me, no one shall turn me back. My shepherd is beside me, and nothing can I lack. His ways the man awaken His sight is never deem He knows the way He taken And I will walk He knows the way He waken and I choose to walk with Him he knows the way he take care, and I will walk with him. Green pastures are before me, which yet I have not seen. Bright skies will soon be home me Where darkest clouds are My path to life is free My Savior has my treasure My Savior has my treasure And He will walk with me And if God is round about you, can you be dismayed? My God is all around me And can If you have a challenge, be encouraged that God is around you and you should not be dismayed. If there is no yet a, a, a challenge in your life, this should be a song of affirmation. He knows the way he taketh and we choose to walk with him. Hallelujah. 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 It is not easy to look in the face of a friend who has betrayed you and tell the friend that I love you. Or give them a hug. Or tell them that I have forgiven you. Especially when you know that a person knows what they are doing is wrong towards you. And yet we've been admonished to show the kind of love that God loved us. And lay down our lives in quotes for them as well as it says in 1 John chapter 3, verse 16. This morning we want to admonish you. And ask you that whatever it is that you're going through, whichever pain, let it go. And let every person that you call a friend or a brother, let them know that you are there for them. And that's the good God that we serve. He's admonished us and he's given us something greater to look up to. He's given us a bigger place that we are going to be living at. So all the things that we're going through, no matter how difficult or painful it is, as much as possible, let it low, let it lay down. Amen. Give them your shoulder and tell them they can lean on you. Just tell them that, and that's what God has told us to do. Hallelujah. So even as we minister, if you can sing along with us, please go ahead and sing with us. Hallelujah. God be praised. Stand with me. Stand with me. 
I want you to agree with me. Agree with me. Because we all are part of God's we family. We all are part Hallelujah. of God's family. Because it is His will. It is His that will. That every need be supplied. Hallelujah. Need be supplied. Look at somebody and let them know you are important to me. You are important and to I need you me. to survive. I need you to You gotta mean the words survive. that you're saying. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say you are important to me. And I need you to survive. I need yeah. you to I'm sure you know the words by now. Survive. You want to put it into action. So look at your neighbor and say these very words to them. Hallelujah. I need you. I need you. And you sure as well need me. You need me. Hallelujah. We are all a part, all a part of God's of family. God. Agree with me. Agree with me. Because we all are a part of we God's will. And it's that God's will. It is that every need right will. here be supplied. That
don't have to worry. You don't have to worry. I can see. I can see your tears. Your tears. I'll be there in a hurry when you go. Friends are there to catch you when you fall. He's my soul. He's my soul. Let them lean on you. He's a shoulder you can lean on me. Give them a shoulder to cry on. Let them know that you are here for them. He's a shoulder you can lean on me. Give them your shoulder, somebody. Let them know they can lean on you. He's a shoulder you can lean on me. That you are my friend, but you are also my brother. Thank God for another day like this, and we bless the Lord for our vessels. The most wonderful ministry in the whole of West Africa. And they have sung what is on our hearts. The love that God requires his people to show in our ministry. Maybe some of you may be disappointed that I'm standing here. Because you are waiting to listen to Elder Agbozo. Those who are following the programs of the church, Elder Agbozo is supposed to speak this morning. Uh, but um, the grace of God has taken him to the United States of America and has asked me to stand in for him. Stand in for him. So if you are waiting for Agbozo, maybe you will be disappointed this morning. But I'm praying that you will not be disappointed. I'm praying that the Lord will use me to speak on this occasion as we celebrate our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ this morning. And uh, I want to draw attention to the theme of the Church of Christ or the Church of Pentecost in the whole year. The whole year, the theme of the church is I will build my church. I will build my church. And in fact, anytime I do think about this, I add the, the other portion of that theme that says, and the gate of hell shall not prevail over the church. It's not just building a church. It's building a church that is strong, a church that cannot be moved, a church that has the power of God, a church that pulls down every stronghold, a church that members are bound together with the love of God, a church that shows the love of God to the world. I will build my church. And the church of Pentecost globally is looking at that. And I've put in place various activities and various programs to ensure that we meet our objective. And as you know, Every second Sunday of a month is being dedicated to evangelism, gospel day, or gospel night, or gospel morning, everywhere in the Church of Pentecost. All because we want to build a church that is globally strong, a church that moves forward, a church that meets the aspirations of the Lord God who called us into this ministry. And this morning, as we still celebrate this vision or this, this theme, I want to speak pick on a related topic, contending for the faith. Contending for the faith. And I read from Acts chapter 2, verse 42 to 47. Contending for the faith in this context. Acts 2, 42 
I read about two passages. Acts 2, 42 to 47. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to breaking of bread, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. Verse 44. All believers were together and had everything in common. All believers were together and had everything in common. Verse 45 says, They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. They sold properties and possessions and, to, and give it out to everyone who had need. And every day, they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. Verse 47, praising God and enjoying the favor of the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who are being saved. And the Lord, take note the last bit of it, the Lord added to their number those who are being saved. That is a perfect church. The target church that the Lord Jesus Christ is looking for. A church that reflects the nature of God himself. A church that cares. A church that is bound together with the love of God. And by that love, they see Jesus in the church. The prototype church. The standard church. And that is the, 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 the vision of all the apostles who led the early church. That will follow that structure of building a church that reflects the nature of God. Now, the next passage is Jude. Jude chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. Jude chapter 1, there's only one chapter in Jude. From verse 1 to 3. It says, Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God, the Father, and preserved in Jesus Christ, and called. Then verse 2 says, Mercy unto you, and peace and love be multiplied. Verse 3 says, Beloved, that is where I have my message this morning. Beloved or beloved, when I gave diligence right unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. As I was writing to you, I found it necessary to urge you, my beloved, that you contend for the faith, preserve the faith, push the agenda of the faith that was given unto the saints. And... Uh, in fact, I, 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 I must say, if you read also, we are not going to read it. Second Peter, verse 1, from verse 12 to 15. You realize that the apostles of old all had a vision to ensure that the fundamentals of the church are preserved. The fundamentals, the quality, the things that God wants the church to do, are preserved. And Peter says, Beloved, I am writing this to you. And I know you know it. But I don't think it's a waste. It's not a waste of time to remind you. I must remind you. Because you know that maybe very soon, I am going to go, I am going to leave this body. But I want to ensure that before I leave this temple, before I die, I will lay a foundation that the faith of the church 
the quality of the church is not forgotten. That the church will still be a strong church. The church will still remember the fundamentals that Jesus placed as he was building the body, the church. Now, beloved, uh, just a little, a little digression as I, re I read that passage of Jude. I love that particular passage, the one chapter of Jude. You know, Jude, as most of you know, uh, humanly speaking, was a half-brother of Jesus Christ. In fact, Jude, Jesus Christ, and James are three brothers, humanly speaking, because they are all children of Mary. But if you look at the passage, you know, Jude says, Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ. Then he moves on and says, the brother of James. Have you noticed it? <laughs> Jude, we, we are three brothers, who, myself, Apostle Aqua, and my elder there. We are three brothers, and I'm introducing myself. My name is Bueti, an elder, a servant of Apostle Aqua, and a brother of Ankara too. Have you seen? We are, we are three, the same children, the same mother, but the man gives a special position to Jesus Christ. I am Jude. I don't deserve to say Jesus is my brother. No. Jesus in a certain special level. He's not my brother. I am a servant of Jesus. But then James is my own brother. He establishes authority on what he's telling us this morning. Then he goes on to bless us. And as I put it in my Facebook page, those of you who follow me, I say anytime I come across where there are proclamations of blessings by these men of God who are, who are asleep, gone, I, I accept it. I appropriate it to myself. When he says, um, he addresses it to us, to them that are sanctified by God, the Father, and preserved in Jesus Christ, and called, that's me and you. Then he says, mercy unto you, peace and love be multiplied unto you. And I say in my spirit, amen. All the time, I say in my spirit, amen. Maybe that's why some of us are being blessed. Because even though they are dead and gone, the proclamations of blessings are still alive. Hallelujah. And so I want to counsel you. I want to urge you. Anytime you come across all those declarations of the men of old, the apostles of old, Apostle Paul, Peter, all of them, all the letters they write, they begin with blessings, blessings and blessings. Take it into your soul. It will do something for you. I mean, oh. And it goes on to the message. Contend for the faith, my beloved. Fight for the faith. Now, you know the story of Jesus Christ after Jesus had accomplished his mission on earth. He got 120 people, committed believers, who he committed the work of the ministry to them. Go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. Matthew 22, from verse 18 to 20. Go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. And you take note. He's not talking about go to preach it only. Don't just go to proclaim it, but make disciples. Make them stay. Build a church, a body of believers, a body of brotherhood or sisterhood for that matter in the Lord who identify themselves to me and the kingdom of which uh, that I'm building. That was a very big job, a mighty job, insurmountable, humanly speaking. But there is something Jesus has said, which I believe encouraged them who went out. Jesus said, I will build my church. And the gate of hell will not prevail over the church. So no matter the difficulty, I am in the shadow of the church. As you move out or whatever you do in the house of God, I am in the shadow to help you. As you take a step of faith, I back you. Because you are acting on my behalf. Therefore, I will build my church. So as they moved on, that is why maybe when somebody like Peter 
and gone, they got to the beautiful gate and they had a confrontation or they had a challenge of healing a cripple. He said, silver and gold have I none. But what we have, we have a backing of Jehovah God. The Lord Jesus Christ is behind us. What we have, we give unto you. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. The mission of building the church wasn't going to be easy. But it was because, it was going to be easy for them because they know Jesus has said, I will build my church. And besides that, in the message he gave to them before he left in Matthew 28, he said, And lo, I will be with you always. I want the church and whoever is listening to me in the ministry, that whatever we are doing in the house of God to progress the kingdom of God, whether in the proclamation of the word of God or in the maintenance of the house of God or the building of discipleship, take note, Jesus said, I am with you always. He says, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. I'm happy to announce to you Jesus is here. But we have a somebody in his name. He does not break his word. And I know he's listening to me. And he knows I'm speaking the truth. Wherever we minister, in order to build a church, a solid church, a body of Christ, we don't do it alone. He is with us. Hallelujah. Contending for the faith. So the apostles resolved that we would do it. And they obeyed him to the letter. To the point that some of them were ready to die for the faith. And some actually died for the faith. Some were killed for the faith. You know Acts chapter 7, the story of Stephen. This young man, what did he do to deserve stoning? Simply because he proclaimed the Lord Jesus Christ. And some years ago, I went to do a study scene. I went for my studies in Italy. And they took us to a sketching. And some of the things we saw inspired us. Some of the things we saw urged us onto contempt for the faith. We were taken to places during the sketching where Christian leaders were, were given to lions as lunch. Where they were challenged during the time of Nero. They were challenged to give their faith or give up their lives. And all, or most of them, gave up their lives in the hope of picking it one day. Because Jesus said, if you lose your life for my sake, you will pick it up. Praise be to God. We went there and saw where they showed us the, where the lions were kept and where the Christians would be brought in. They stabbed the lions for three days and they bring the Christians in. Those who want to declare against Jesus, we will just open the door for you. And those who want to stay on, then you can hear the lions rolling. They look at the lions in the face. In the face say, we believe in Jesus Christ. And they stood for the faith. Because they needed to contend. They wanted to build. They needed to obey the Lord Jesus Christ. Some lost their lives. Beloved, some sold their properties. They sold what they had. They sold their goods in the passage we read. Simply because... When you come into the body of the Lord, when you become a Christian, you become a child of God, you belong to Jesus Christ, what you have belongs to Jesus Christ. It's for all. But this secret, some of us don't know. And that is why they said, none of them kept anything for himself. They all recognize that whatever we have belongs to all of us. If I have it, it belongs to the community of believers. Barnabas, in chapter 4, Acts, sold his things and gave it out. And if you come to Pentecost, Church of Pentecost, you find out that if you go to the history of the Church of Pentecost, we learn that there are several people, Mami Obo, Dickness Obo, and a few others, who sold all what they had in order to progress the agenda of the church. When you come to the Lord Jesus Christ, take note, one of the foundational truths is that what you have doesn't belong to you. 
It belongs to the body of God. Jesus Christ. It belongs to the church. It's very important. And those who know that, feel free to let it go. Feel free to release it. Those who understand that what I have does not belong to me. It belongs to God. It belongs to the body of Christ. They feel free to let go when the need arises. This morning, I want to urge you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, as part of the heir to contend for the faith, begin to let go what belongs to you in the house of God. May we say amen again. And because of that, they were able to build a solid church. A solid church. A perfect church. The image of the church that God wants all churches all over the whole world to imitate. Including PIWC in this dome. Because of the obedience to keep the faith, they built a solid church. And that passage we read, they devoted themselves to the, pre- to, to, to the teachings of the apostles. They devoted themselves to fellowshipping, coming together, working together. Fellowshipping means come together, relate, work together, connect and that is what God is looking for in this house. This morning, we did, a, we did a bit of Bible studies. I wanted to know how do we show love to ourselves. We're talking about calling people to say, hello, how are you? We're talking about visiting people. We're talking about maybe giving out, taking money and giving out, supporting the needy. Coming together like this that we are here this morning. That is what God is looking for. If you want to become, if you want to belong, if you call yourself a Christian, then not only keeping the doctrines of the apostles and the leadership of the church, but you are also to fellowship, come together, build together, work together. If somebody is here, and you can't fellowship with somebody in this house, sorry, you are failing. If you are listening to me, and you call yourself a Christian, And in the house of God, you cannot look somebody in the face, eyeball to eyeball, and say, praise the Lord in truth, in sincerity, that you are failing. And maybe PRWC Dome, nobody is here like that. And we give glory to God. If we can see everybody look up, everybody in the face and say, oh, hallelujah, praise be to God. I can look in the face of John Brock and say, brother, praise the Lord. And deep in my heart, I have nothing against him, and I see him as my brother. I can see Rosemont and say, Rosemont, Rose, praise be to God. And there is nothing in my heart. And it covers the whole house. Oh, wow. Then God is in the house. For God is love. God is love. And that's what he's looking for. Sometimes, just a hug. Just a hug. Hello. Whether male or female. Pentecost, even if it's Pentecost hug, you know, like this. Uh, you know Pentecost hug, even that one is okay. Huh? <laughs> Praise God. Why you hug a sister? <laughs> Pentecost hug. I was reading somewhere. I was reading somewhere, and it says, I don't know how true is this science. science Scientists who are listening to me, that um, uh, when you hug a lady, I don't know, it gives some confidence or something. It brings certain solution. Yeah, they say so. I read it somewhere. So once I, I was hugging some Pentecost sister, he's in this house. I know he's watching and listening to me. He did this, and I'm come on. Yeah. I did a Pentecost hug, and now we. Hug me, eh? huh? <laughs> Hallelujah. Let us show that is our house. She's my sister. I can hug you. Nothing will happen here. Here. Nothing will happen. Nothing will go on here. It is pure and pure. Hallelujah. And you know, you know, you know what? Some people can't do it because they don't do it. 
So if one day it happens like that, ah, bibi yayeno. But those of us who are used to it, eh, my yama cow. So when I do, nothing happens. Do it. Hallelujah. Apostle, I need your authority to ask them to do it. He's giving you authority. Do it. Don't you know the Bible is a case one another? I don't say go for the month. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> We're talking about building a church. Listen, as I stand here, it's such a beautiful place, edifice. And I salute all the people who contributed to this. I had traveled to the U.S. So what they were doing, I wasn't here. When I entered here, I said, wow. Is that PIWC of where I was the first presiding elder? Woo! Praise be to God. You see, you are doing such a wonderful thing. But let it not be just be the beauty of the edifice. Let's go beyond um, fellowship. Fellowship. And that's what God is looking for. And let us do everything possible. Hey, ICT. It's trying to misbehave. All right. They broke bread. Breaking bread at homes. Breaking bread at homes. This one, I believe, no, the bre breaking of bread. I believe this one is both. There were the breaking of bread of the Lord's Supper. Now I believe there's a breaking of bread of eating. Proper eating banku apule. And the uh, uh, Mekpo invited me to his house. And the apule I ate. Wonderful. This man is an everywhere. I'm an Ashanti man. And I sat in his hall. The woman prepared for me and I ate it. I said, this is my brother. This is because Jesus has kept us together. We must show that love and affection. Oh, hallelujah. Togetherness. They ate in their homes. They broke bread. That is what church God is looking for. They prayed together. Ah, when we come for prayer meetings and I see empty chairs, my heart pains me. They pray together because they are coming to call upon a common God. They are coming together to pray unto him and to see and push the agenda of the church. They did pray together, as the Bible says in that passage. And everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and signs and miracles were performed. Look, when we pray to the, to, the, to, the, to the mind of God, when we do as God requires, he will manifest himself. And in this house, we want to see miracles. We want to hear testimonies. I remember the other time, Pastor was saying that he would want a situation where every, every Sunday, at least, there is one great testimony to encourage us. These days, when one testimony is, I want to sing one song. We talk about testimonies. The acts of God. What God has done that will encourage somebody. What God has done that will lead the faith of somebody. But until we have come together, until we create the environment, until, until we make God feel comfortable to work miracles among us, it will be a scarce commodity. May God have mercy upon us that the famine of the miracles will be over. In this house, there is famine, there is severe famine for miracles and wonders. It will be over as we come together as a body and as we show the love of God to ourselves, as we, we bear the mark of Christ. The people will say, these are Christians. They resemble Jesus Christ. So they are Christians. Then we come to that level. We may not see the power of God, but I'm praying that the goodness of God will let all what you are doing bring us to that level. That he will manifest himself among us as we meet to pray. Everyone was full of how they saw miracles and signs. And all believers were together and had everything in common. Ah, amazing. Everything in common. Maybe today it's not very practical to say we all have uh, my car in common. Maybe it's not practical. But the principle is the same. The underlying factor is what I have. 
must be placed at the disposal of the church or the one who is in need. That's the principle. And we need, we need not dilute it at all. That is why it says contempt for the faith. Defend it. Let's push it. Push the agenda of the faith. And they sow property and possessions and give to everyone who had need. Hey! So my land at somewhere, I go and sell it and come and place it before the apostles. Please share it. Look among us who is looking to do some business. Then you give it out. Oh, my beloved, this is what God is looking for. God is looking for such a church, a church of love, a church of sacrifice, a church that sacrifices for the good of others. Members, because we know, listen to me, we know that we don't all have um, capacity. There was a watch here. We don't all have capacity um, same. And I shanti say in saying nine year There are some who financial they are really financial pillars. Somebody can 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 do something, somebody here, his life will never be the same. And it won't affect him at all. Somebody the, 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 somebody can uplift somebody in this house. That that next year you think he wasn't with us. These are the things God is looking for in the, in the, in the prototype church that you want to see. And every day they continue to meet together in the temple court. They broke bread in their homes. Praising God and rejoicing, enjoying the favor of the people. When they enjoy the favor of the people, the house will be filled. Did you hear me? When this house, this dome, enjoys the favor of the people around here, they will run here. They will fill the place. They will fill the place. No wonder the church continued to grow. At any rate, because they had fulfilled the mandate given to them by the church, the Lord added. The Lord added. So every Sunday, he kept on adding. And I'm telling you, beloved, you are listening to me. God can fill this house ten times. He can. And we need to do that which will inspire God, encourage God to fill the house. That is the vision of the church. That's the mission of this house. That is why there's a program to be the communities to go out there to evangelize. You are beginning of an aboeti. Start of my community. My community members who are here. This evening we are meeting at AA Hotel and adopt the strategy how we cannot fail and get a false start for this church. All communities are supposed to bring souls and bring them and, dis and disciple them. The discipleship is very important to me. Bring them in and disciple them. Make them stay. I remember there's uh, Dickness, uh, say Jamra's wife. I don't know, the man is here. There's a man he pulled out from somewhere and uh, Brother had to walk around him and try to keep... The man is still in the faith. He's still here. I visited him one day and I saw where he's coming from and, and he's still holding the faith. They come travel far off and come to church here because of the love, the affection that we did to offer unto him and to... I hope you are here. Sorry, I don't want to show you. I don't want to... But then, as the church continued to grow, as the church continued to grow, things began to change. Around AD 65, 65 years after the Lord Jesus Christ had died and gone away, the church began to feel some challenges. False churches began to came, come in. False brethren came, came in. In every house of God, there are the two children of God and there are the false ones. There are the mixed multitude. You know, when Israel was leaving Egypt, the Bible says, mixed multitude joined them. They were not Jews. I don't know how they managed to join them. They were not Jews. They didn't celebrate the Passover. But when Israel was leaving, they joined. And they caused trouble. 
they cause a lot of trouble. And so, I always challenge the children of God to look forward. And don't listen the other way. Sometimes, somebody who is speaking to you comes from a mixed multitude. He doesn't belong. And so, ah, now the baby ba wo ye, wo de wuni munti ha bibi ba yo. Wo de fesika man wo wu. The mixed multitude. Oh, praise be to God. God have mercy upon us. So some entered and they began to teach wrong doctrines and try to change the, the prototype church and the, and the vision and the, and the churches that God, the, the, the image, the image, the proper image that God wants the church to be. They began to alter it. Indeed, most of the letters that were written by the apostles were written to address some of these issues that people poured into the church. And even today, we are having it. And so, Apostle Jude got up and said, No, my beloved, this is not my understanding. What I am seeing in the house of God, what those people are doing, what those people are saying, is not what I was taught by my brother. Humanly speaking, Jesus. No. He taught us the pure, uncontaminated faith. The faith of building a church and believers, a body of Christ that is full of love. By your love, they will know that I came from God. Love is a mark of the church of Christ. Now they are creating a problem. But I know in every situation, God preserves a people who do not bow to Baal. In all situations, Elijah says, Lord, I'm the only prophet who is left to all Israel is gone astray. God said, you are joking. There are 7,000 people who stand for my name, so you are not alone. At all times in the house of God, there are some, no matter what, who stand for the faith. And you are the one I'm speaking to. He says, contend for the faith. Don't let the negatives overcome you. You are the positive. You are the ones, the custodians of the true faith of God. Don't let it go. Defend it. Contend for it. Push it. Praise be to God. And uh, if you do it, if you do it, you will silence the negatives. You will silence the against. Let your fight silence them. And that will build a perfect church, a body of believers, a caring church. A church that is willing to do. That, that will blow the mind of people. And I know this house has a capacity to do it. And I know I've been in Pentecost for over 40 years. I've never gone to a house, a church, an assembly that has been able to buy a whole brand new bus, a whole one uh, four, four by four for a pastor, a whole uh, administrative vehicle at a one offering. It's never happened except in this house. You have all the capacity. You have the ability to do that God, God wants you to do. We have. God has planted pillars of love among us. And I want to urge you as Apostle Paul, Apostle Jude said, contend for the faith. Don't give up. Push the agenda and dilute the negatives if there are any of them. I know they are there, but there are always 7,000 who have never bowed to bail. Oh, hallelujah. And you, the 7,000 people, keep your head up. Don't be discouraged. And do the work of the Lord. For in our labor, our labor will never be in vain. Soon and very soon, he will be coming. And he will reward us according to what we have done in him. Now, uh, I put a bit of why, why the necessity of contending for the faith at this particular time. The necessity at this particular time. Yeah, beloved, you know we are in a period where there's a 
nominality in Christianism. Nominalism in Christendom. Many Christians have become nominal Christians. Christianity is becoming too ordinary. Ordin but Christianity is not an ordinary religion. Not ordinary at all. It is Jesus Christ himself. As I've already said, the Bible says in Matthew 21, 24 verse 1, I hope it's correct. It says, the love of many will grow cold. A time is coming. The love of many will grow cold. There will be so much pressures of life that if the Lord doesn't intervene, the love of many will grow cold. There will be no love. There will be no activity to push the agenda of the Lord Jesus Christ because of the end time. And this day we see nominalism. And maybe somebody is listening to me he is just a nominal Christian. Okahua and Yema. Ufri Muswa and Tosini. In other words, he doesn't add to it. Neither does he subtract from it. As for him or her, Sunday morning he will come. Next time, I was listening to uh, FM stations. Certain man was talking on the FM stations. As for me, and confidently, I go to church only once a year. It's only 31st December that I go to church. And he was saying so confidently, this man will die and he will say, God to glory. And go and look at the, <laughs> uh, the tributes. Odonia, he loves the Lord. But he goes to church only once in the whole year. And there may be somebody here who doesn't belong to prayer vessels. Oshes, no. Nothing, nothing. Ordinary, just there. And the Bible says to continue. The love of many will grow cold. They will not be available for God's work. They make no impact. If all Christianity depends on them, Christianity is dead. They are mutu. If Christianity is them, they, it's at their back, Christianity will be dead. This morning, begin to change your mind. And come with us. We are building a solid church. Uncaring community. Because of that. Uncaring. He doesn't care what happens to the brother or sister. He doesn't care. Souls are perishing. I don't care. Needy persons are seen every day. I don't care. So nominalism brings out this sort of gaps in the church of Christ. And it deviates from the vision of the first church that Jesus was, is looking for. And the Lord wants us to be restored to the vision of a church that is full of activity. A church that is led by the Spirit of God to fulfill the agenda of our Lord Jesus Christ. Four teachers are there for four teachers. We know. There are four teachers around. The court, JWs, in Jehovah Witness, they say Jesus came in 1914. So Jesus' second return has already come. And people follow. All sorts of the Mormons, Church of Christ, the Way International, Christian Science, Seven day Adventists, all sorts of teachings in the house of God. But those who know the faith that be strong and take action, that is contending for the faith and holding the truth of the gospel. False practices. False. False practices. In the name of Christianity. False prophets in Ghana. I took, I took a car um, uh, with, with a, a taxi the last Friday and uh, I was trying to share the gospel. Don't be surprised I took a taxi. Once a while, try and see. It's interesting. And then I was sharing the gospel. And he said, he's a Christian. Then he told me what happened the other time he took somebody. He gave some, two people a lift. What had happened was that, he said, when we got to the church, they asked me to pack somewhere and dress the person well before I let them go. You know what they had decided? They had decided to let the person go and fake to be a cripple in the church. So when the two of them went, 
they, they, they got to, they were getting to the church like they have got to the gate. They parked somewhere and they begged, please, let's let him finish getting him right. So he had to, and he sat down in the car they were behind, he dressed and changed, changed and put in some different clothes and then sat in their uh, wheelchair before they paid him and left. And then he drove. <laughs> some the man, hey, yes, why? Hey, you know. All for the faith. There are challenges of several religions, a Kanka, Hinduism. So yesterday, uh, was like I witnessed one of them. I hope you were supposed to. I'm expecting him to contend for the faith. There is persecution of Christians. I cannot you go into a lot because of time. Persecution of Christians. I was trying to read yesterday how Christians have been persecuted all over the whole world, especially in totalitarian countries like North Korea, in the half of the Islamic areas. It's an abomination to preach Christianity. And it's happening all around. And the people of God must rise up and take action. We need to contend for the faith. But what we do? And it's very important. Otherwise, you know what's happened. Look, look at the U.S. I was reading on the internet. There's a village uh, somewhere. They took it to court. There's an old church, old church, like our dome here. And at the top of it was a cross. The cross of Jesus Christ, the symbol. The community has taken them to church that the symbol is an offense. It's offense to their faith. So anytime they get out from your house, they see the cross there. So it is an offense to your faith. It should be pulled down. And the cross has been taken down. The cross has been taken down. Well, know what you believe, number one. Know what you believe. I don't believe anybody here doesn't know what he believes. First Corinthians, Colossians 3.16 says, Let the word of God dwell in you. Richly, know what you believe so you can contend for it. Let your actions show your faith. Leave it. Leave the faith. Leave. L-I-V. Leave the faith. Show the faith. By the life you live, let your faith be known. Let them see you and say, this is a Christian. By what you do. Very, very important. Preach the word. Speak it. Share it. Progress it. Just like you have put a program for years, do it. Let us take note and do it and do it very well. Prayer. Come for prayer meetings. Get involved and intercede. Sometimes you need to get up one hour, intercede for our brothers. Sometimes I feel like weeping when I'm interceding for them in the faraway countries, all those Islamic countries. Say, God, intervene and set somebody free. Maybe somebody is going to be beheaded tomorrow. Send encouragement. They are waiting for us. To push for God to intervene. Now, finally, and what today is even set for, it is important that we support to build a healthy love, a healthy church where love is our foundation. This church must be a church of love. Use love and care to contend for the faith. Did you hear me? Use love or don't, and care for humanity to push the faith and the agenda of the faith. And as you show your love, people will see Jesus Christ in you. The kingdom of God spreads through believers' concern and eagerness to help others. As they left to live together and they helped others, the message went out. That's the community of love. Let us defend the faith with our love and be very practical. Like today, as we had our Bible study, uh, our teacher, uh, Rosamond, has given us our assignment that next week when we come, everybody will have to come and tell us what love or what, what need we attended to somebody's life this course of the week. Let us show that because we belong to Jesus Christ. Now today, according to leadership, we're going to show our care to others among us as part of the mission to keep the faith. Not only preach it, but disciple people. Show your love to them. Let, make them feel belong, that they belong to us. Let them feel that we care. They belong to a community. It's part of the tools that we use to contend for the faith. 
As James said, when you go read that passage, it's an amazing passage. James chapter 2, 14 to 19 to the end. Show me your faith. Can somebody show me your faith? Can you show me your faith? What is your faith? Oh, nobody can show me your faith. You can't show faith without action. And he said, by my actions, I will show you my faith. Beloved, it's very important. We have a mission to accomplish. I'll build my church. And God will use you and me to build a church. And we must marshal all the resources to build a church. And when he comes, he will not fail us. May God bless you. Let's rise up. Let's rise up. Hit him. Mm -mm -mm -mm. You can sing it well for us. God is love. Those who know how to sing it. Let's be on our feet wherever we are. Father, thank you for another morning and for your word to us. That you might reconcile humanity unto yourself. This is our generation, Lord. This is our time. Our time to show the love. Our time to progress the vision. Our time to contend for the faith. And as we stand before you, help us. Build in us a desire. Build in us the energy the strength, the power to contend for the faith which was handed over to the churches of old. We thank you that in you we are able to do it. In Jesus' name we pray. And all the saints of God say Amen. May God bless you. Praise the Lord. We thank God for his word that has come to us this morning. Telling us to contend for the faith. To contend for the faith is not something you can just alter with your mouth and be free. It is about expending your life for something. But before you can do this, you need to know who laid that foundation, who established and why you need to contend for that faith. Christ Jesus first showed us love. So when we talk about love, it is not in the African way of how we see love. You know, when you talk about love, what comes into the black man's mind is something else. But Jesus Christ first of all gave himself to us and this morning I want to give you that privilege to be a disciple for what you want to go and contend for for you to give or to accept this love from our Lord Jesus Christ this morning we heard that to love someone who has done something wrong for you is something that is difficult to apprehend. But you can love on the basis that you first of all have experienced the love of Jesus Christ. And this morning I want to give you that chance. I want to give you that privilege to experience this love of Jesus Christ. For us to show that love for us. And I'm talking about no other person than you Jesus Christ. I want to call you.